Allah had a remarkably strong interest in Muhammad's personal life, and in particular in his sex life. And many of the revelations in the Quran specifically favour Muhammad and are not intended for anyone else. Quran 49.2 O you who have believed, do not raise your voices above the voice of the Prophet, or be loud to him in speech, like the loudness of some of you to others, lest your deeds become worthless while you perceive not. So, don't speak louder than Muhammad. Quran 33.53 O you who have believed, do not enter the houses of the Prophet, except when you are permitted for a meal, without awaiting its readiness. But when you are invited, then enter, and when you have eaten, disperse without seeking to remain for conversation. Indeed, that behaviour was troubling the Prophet, and he is shy of dismissing you. So, don't bother Muhammad when he's busy. But Allah is not shy of the truth, and when you ask his wives for something, ask them from behind a partition. That is purer for your hearts and their hearts. And it is not conceivable or lawful for you to harm the Messenger of Allah or to marry his wives after him ever. Indeed, that would be in the sight of Allah an enormity. So, leave Muhammad's wives alone. Quran 33.37 And remember, O Muhammad, when you said to the one on whom Allah bestowed favour and you bestowed favour, keep your wife and fear Allah, while you concealed within yourself that which Allah is to disclose. And you feared the people, while Allah has more right than you fear him. So when Zaid had no longer any need for her, we married her to you, in order that there not be upon the believers any discomfort concerning the wives of their adopted sons, when they no longer have need of them. And ever is the command of Allah accomplished. Now what this is about, when Muhammad wanted to have sex with Zaid's wife Zainab, Allah revealed that it was okay for her husband to divorce her, and Muhammad to add her to his flock of wives. Quran 33.38 There is not to be upon the Prophet any discomfort concerning that which Allah has imposed upon him. This is the established way of Allah with those Prophets who have passed on before. And ever is the command of Allah a destiny decreed. In other words, Muhammad always gets a free pass. Quran 66 Dot one to five. O Prophet, why do you prohibit yourself from what Allah has made lawful for you, seeking the approval of your wives? And Allah is forgiving and merciful. Allah has already ordained for you Muslims the dissolution of your oaths, and Allah is your protector, and he is the knowing the wise. In other words, you don't have to ask your wife's permission for anything. And if you've taken an oath, then they are dissolved. Quran 66.3-5 And remember when the Prophet confided to one of his wives a statement, and when she informed another of it, and Allah showed it to him, and he made known part of it and ignored a part. And when he informed her about it, she said, Who told you this? He said, I was informed by the knowing, the acquainted. If you two wives repent to Allah, it is best, for your hearts have deviated. But if you cooperate against him, then indeed Allah is his protector, and Gabriel and the righteous of the believers and the angels, moreover, are his assistants. 
In other words, the wives had better obey the prophet. Quran 66.5 Perhaps his Lord, if he divorced you all, would substitute for him wives better than you, submitting to Allah, believing, devoutly obedient, repentant, worshipping and travelling one's previously married and virgins. In other words, if you aren't good girls, I will divorce you all. Muhammad was caught sleeping with a slave woman on the night that he was supposed to be with one of his wives. Initially promising to be faithful, Allah tells his prophet to break that promise and enjoy sex with his slaves. If his wives objected, then it may be, if he divorced you all, that his Lord will give him instead of you wives better than you. Quran 33.50 O Prophet, indeed we have made lawful to you your wives to whom you have given their due compensation, and those your right hand possess from what Allah has returned to you of captives, and the daughters of your paternal uncles, and the daughters of your paternal aunts, and the daughters of your maternal uncles, and the daughters of your maternal aunts who emigrated with you, and a believing woman if she gives herself to the Prophet, and if the Prophet wishes to marry her. This is only for you, excluding the other believers. We certainly know what we have made obligatory upon them concerning their wives, and those their right hands possess, but this is for you, in order that there will be upon you no discomfort, and ever is Allah forgiving and merciful. So this is another special command that Allah sent down to Muhammad that allows unlimited sex divinely sanctioned by Allah. Quran 33.51 You, O Muhammad, may put aside whom you will of them or take to yourself whom you will and any that you desire of those wives from whom you had temporarily separated, there is no blame upon you in returning her. That is more suitable than they should be content and not grieve, and that they should be satisfied with what you have given them, all of them. And Allah knows what is in your hearts, and ever is Allah knowing and forbearing. This is about Muhammad's wives grumbling about his preference for sleeping with a slave girl, Mary the Copt, instead of them. Accordingly, Muhammad may sleep with whichever wife or slave he wishes, without having to hear the others complain. Quran 4.24 And all married women are forbidden unto you, save those captives whom your right hands possess. Here Allah even permitted Muhammad and his men to have sex with married slaves, such as those captured in battle. Women captured in battle? I find that very difficult to believe. Women didn't tend to fight in battles. Quran 33.21 there has certainly been for you in the Messenger of Allah an excellent pattern for anyone whose hope is in Allah and the last day and who remembers Allah often. This is telling Muslims that Allah says that Muhammad is an excellent role model. Quran 68.2-4 you are not, O Muhammad, by the favour of your Lord, a madman. Wait, what? Allah finds it necessary to explain that Muhammad is not insane? And indeed, for you is a reward uninterrupted, and indeed you are of great moral character. Well, 
I think we can probably judge for ourselves the moral character of Muhammad.